This is Beat the Closing Line. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beat the Closing Line. I am your host, Nicole Russo, alongside analysts for thelines.com, Mo Nawara and Steven Andres, who is joining us for, I think this is your third time on the show. So welcome back. We have finally made it to the Super Bowl. I cannot believe it. The season is over. I don't know what the three of us are going to do with our newfound free time once the Super Bowl is over. Hopefully some vacation is in our future. Last week, watching those games, Eagles 49ers, absolute hot garbage. One of the most boring (laughs) games I've seen. The Chiefs and the Bengals gave us a little bit more spice. I mean, Patrick Mahomes was on the verge of slinging footballs out of a wheelchair if he took one more step on that bum ankle. But now we get to discuss this Eagles-Chiefs matchup, what we've seen in the market as far as line movements and injuries that we need to be keeping track of heading into this game. But before we get into all of that, as always, make sure you subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and ring the bell so you know every time we post a new video. And if you're listening to us where you get your podcasts, make sure to subscribe to the Beat the Closing Line pod. Guys, how did the bets go last weekend? I know we discussed this a little bit, but kind of a bad beat with that Pacheco you know, over on the rushing yards because he had a ton of yards. They just happened to be receiving yards. So, Stephen, I did feel bad for you on that one when I was watching the game. How did the rest of your bets go? I appreciate the sympathy because it was one of the worst (laughs) betting weekends I've had of the entire season. Thankfully, it was pretty good the rest of the way, so it wasn't too much of a knock. But, yeah, when when you're in big on on the teaser leg there on 49ers up to 8.5 and and they run out of quarterbacks in the middle of the game, that's not going to go well, Nicole. So, yeah, definitely did not go well, but hat tip to you, Mo, because I know you had a, had a pretty solid weekend. Yeah, really good weekend for me. I was huge on the Eagles, but not going to do any victory laps. I mean, like I said, how lucky can you get? I mean, not even just the injuries, but free touchdown at the start on a failed fourth and three. Although it was a pretty good play by both sides, but he just didn't manage to complete it. But, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything went the Eagles' way from the start and just not really going to take any victory laps on that one. I will say we all should have known, though, that the Chiefs and Bengals was going to be close after that first game because you know the NFL had to tighten the script for the second game. Oh. <laughs> or nobody was going to watch it, you know? <laughs> I mean, everyone else is doing content about the script and it being rigged. So it just seems like, no, I'm just kidding. Come on. The NFL is not rigged. Don't get on this bandwagon, Mo. Don't get us on this bandwagon. I know Mo is only kidding, but God, I I can't stand these people. I really can't. It's everywhere. I I can't stand it. Oh, man. I I just love that some of the other shows were running with it, like Aaron Foster. (laughs) That was That was amazing. Where he's like, you have to practice. You had to pra- You got the script. Week two, you're gonna be injured. Week three, you're gonna go for three touchdowns. Arian Foster, that might have been. That might have been. Yeah, the best. that that subtle shot by the host too, telling him about he was gonna have a hamstring injury because he had all those hamstring injuries, <laughs> and then, and then all the memes coming out about it too. Like, I, I saw one today actually. Uh, Alex Smith reading the script for when uh, he was gonna have his leg shattered <laughs> yeah, in, in yeah. 2018. <laughs> The the Tom Brady looking over to see Matt Ryan coming into the script reading was a good one, too. By the way, let's just, I mean, it's hard to talk about the Super Bowl. We've had massive news come out today. Number one, Beyonce is going on tour. That's probably the most important. I mean, B hasn't been on tour in quite some time. And I'm sure when she comes to Las Vegas, the tickets will be no less than $3,000. But also Tom Brady retiring for the 57th time saying that this is the final time and also the Patriots throwing a little bit of shade at him. I don't know if you saw, but they just basically retweeted the tweet that they put out the first time that he retired (laughs) the exact same tweet. So I mean, a lot of other big news coming out in addition to the the Super Bowl happening. That's pretty good. Yeah. Do you guys, what's your fondest Tom Brady memory for me? It was um, betting on the bucks to win the Super Bowl literally the day before he signed because I felt like it was either going to be there or the chargers and couldn't envision him going and playing Patrick Mahomes twice a year. So 
Uh, I'll always have a, I hated Brady forever. And then he cashed a 50 to one Super Bowl ticket for me. So can't hate him too much now. I already posted mine in the discord. Brandon <laughs> Graham stripping him to end the Super Bowl. That's my entire extended family's favorite Tom Brady memory too, <laughs> by the way. I just don't know when I was a young girl, I had a very big crush on Tom Brady. And then I think like, as I got older and my football, like Steelers passion, I've always been a Steelers fan, but like, as I, like, I really started to understand football and that passion grew, then it went from like having mm -hmm. a sc school girl crush on him to like absolutely despising him for a while. And then for <laughs> some reason, like when he went to the Bucks, I just like didn't despise him that much anymore. I think it was just that Patriots run. I don't know if I can like narrow it down to a single memory, but it was like, it's very love hate for me with Tom Brady for a while since I was like. God, he's been in the league since I was like eight. So, you know, a lot of time with me and Tom. Did, did you have the poster on your bedroom wall? Yes, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> wow. This was this was for real then. It was for real. A crush for a while. I had asked. They used to sell at like those mall kiosks. They would do like the the pencil sketches like the, and then it would say like tom brady like and i asked for one of those for christmas another fun fact this is very embarrassing but my other big schoolgirl crush was andy roddick the american tennis player and uh, you guys Omaha's remember, own well you guys and remember a, and this though fan. and a chiefs fan and <laughs> he uh do you guys remember those like got milk campaigns that the mm -hmm. athletes used to do like that was the pinnacle milk mustache right? Exactly. Yeah, they have a mustache. So this was like maybe like third, fourth grade. Nicole and my school got the Andy Rod. Like after he won the U.S. Open, they he they got the Andy Roddick. He had the racket behind his head. This giant got milk poster, and it's all I wanted for Christmas. And my mom like called the school, and she was like, "We'll give you like five hundred bucks for this got milk poster." <laughs> and they were like, "You can't. We can't. Like it's property of the school district." So like my mom like must have went on the depths of eBay. And for like 12 <laughs> years growing up, I had like, I don't know, like a 10 by 10 Andy Roddick got milk like banner hanging up in my wall and then next to Tom Brady. So, you know, really <laughs> was a dedicated young sports fan. Well, well, I know what to get you for a wedding present now. So thank you for that. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure my future husband will be thrilled with it. I, I honestly wish I kept it. I don't know like where that Andy Roddick Got Milk banner went to. Maybe, hopefully it's donated to some school in Omaha. <laughs> Mo and I will check the depths of eBay and see if there's still one out there somewhere. For you. <laughs> From, I think it was like 04. You know, it's like a it's like a classic relic now. But shout out to Andy Roddick. He's on the new Netflix documentary Breakpoint doing a very good job commenting on that. But all right, we'll get... I'm embarrassed myself myself enough, so we'll we'll get into the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, when it comes to this matchup in particular, we've seen a decent amount of line movement. A lot of that's had to do with injuries. Right now, the Eagles are sitting at about minus one and a half. But earlier in the season, and C Stephen, you're going to touch on this, the Chiefs probably would have been favored on a neutral field. So we know Hertz has been dealing with the shoulder injury. We've got Mahomes. We saw him clearly struggling with that ankle injury. And we'll talk through these teams' injuries a little bit later. But, you know, the line has been fluctuating. So talk us through where it was before, Stephen, where it's sitting now, and key takeaways that we should get from this. Sure. So so Sunday night, right after the AFC title game ended, Super Bowl odds opened up at all the major domestic books, and the Chiefs were a small favorite. They were one, one and a half point favorite. And less than an hour later, the Eagles were two and a half point favorites. That's come back a little bit since. So we're basically sitting at what, like one and a half right now. So that was a very interesting, fast move to me to go from Chiefs favorite to Eagles two and a half. Because if you looked at the closing lines throughout the season at various points along the way, there was no point during the regular season where the Eagles would have been even a pick em on a neutral field against the Kansas City Chiefs, let alone a favorite. If you went back to the Eagles bye week, the Chiefs would have been about a two point favorite on a neutral field, but less than a full field goal. If you go to late November before Jalen Hurts' injury, 
closing lines indicated KC would have probably been close to a two point favorite, maybe a little less at that juncture. So the rating was still being bumped up for the Eagles, but still about a two point underdog to Kansas City. So to me, the Super Bowl is literally the first time all season long that Philadelphia is favored over Kansas City on a neutral field, which is, I mean, Mo. You have more experience in this than I do, but in my limited experience over the past handful of years, I can't see that. I can't remember a time where there was that big of an upgrade for a team from the title game to the Super Bowl to a point that we haven't even seen them at any point throughout the season. So I'm curious what your reaction was to that, too. I think the same as yours. Um, I'm I'm really surprised. Uh, Just really a a strange situation uh kind of baffling to me that the chiefs have been immediately moved to underdogs i i don't know what we saw this weekend that's making a material difference in the line i guess the only thing that i can think of is like multiple you know cascading injuries uh in the chiefs receiving core uh but i would guess most if not all of those players are going to be back and I I just don't like we just watched two games. One game, okay, the Eagles looked good, I guess, and overall, but it wasn't even really a real game. I mean, you're playing against a wildcat offense or whatever it is, basically a quarterback that can't throw more than a screen. It was then, not a real game. It was a fake game. Yeah. No, that, I mean you're getting is, into the point where like they're taking players from other positions and now saying that this is going to be their emergency quarterback if they lose. Yeah, handing Christian McCaffrey quarterback helmets. I mean, it's not a game you can take anything away from. And then on the other side, you have the Chiefs, which pretty soundly outplayed the Bengals, I thought. I know that the game was close, but it was close mostly because of one of the biggest fluke plays of the year. I mean, the Chiefs were driving to probably end the game. Seven, eight minutes left, they go up two scores. It's going to be really, really hard, if not impossible, for the Bengals to come back in that situation. Um, And and then Mahomes just loses the ball without getting hit. I I mean, that's... I've been watching Mahomes play football since the day he walked in the door, basically, and that's never happened, so... Um, I don't think it happened to that, Josh Johnson, a fourth string quarterback in the game before, like that's a fourth string quarterback thing that happens not to the greatest quarterback that may have ever set foot on earth. It was just the yeah, like, wild mo. It, it was a complete fluke play that got the Bengals back in the game. And, and, and if you just look through that box score, it's obvious that the chiefs outplayed them. They had more yards. They had more yards per play. They had more sacks. They had fewer turnovers. I, I thought they were better on special teams. Uh, the punting game in particular was very good to the Chiefs. That return, obviously, by Sky Moore, but I, I think Tommy Townsend pinned them inside the 10 a couple times. He, he was probably the best punter in the NFL this year. I mean, underrated weapon for the Chiefs for sure. Not one they break out very often, but he was very good. So no surprise there. Butker makes a long catch. I mean, the Chiefs were just better in basically all phases of football. And I, I think when you look at, you know, uh, football outsiders, they do the post-game win expectancy. I, I think it tells the tale. I mean, yeah, the score was close, but they had the Chiefs 90% to win that game based on the the happenings on the field. And, and then the, you have an Eagles team that I, I'm not saying they're not good. I'm, I'm saying we literally don't know right now because they have not had to play, like, any real football this whole uh, playoffs and even end of the regular season. I mean – Jalen Hurts has not had to throw a pass pretty much it is basically what's been happening. Uh, they, they had that free win against the Niners, and then they had the overmatched Giants, which, let's be honest, if they put Gardner Minshew in, they still would have won that game by at least 14. So I, I don't know if anybody knows what the Eagles' current strength is right now. Yeah, Nicole, just to kind of punctuate this, I, I don't think any of us are saying that the Eagles aren't that good. They're They're clearly a very good team. All season we've said they're one of the four best teams in the league. But – This line is a point in which we haven't seen all year with Patrick Mahomes as the opponent here. So from a process perspective for me, plus money on Kansas City seems like value here. If you are somebody that is just looking at the Super Bowl as just one of more than 100 games that you bet throughout the course of an NFL season, if it's just one out of 100, then you're going to take the long game 
You're going to go by process and you're going to take what you think is probably some good value here on Kansas City plus money on a neutral field, which you wouldn't have gotten against any other opponent other than Buffalo the entire season. Now, if you're looking at a more specific analysis of this game, you want to get into the weeds a little bit, then yeah, I do certainly think there are some arguments to back the Eagles in this game, but you are assuming and hoping that those conclusions are correct based on nothing that we've actually seen in the playoffs at this point. They they had a fake game against the Niners and they had an inferior opponent against the Giants. They didn't have to play the Bengals. They didn't have to play the Cowboys and they didn't have to play the 49ers at full strength. So, you know, ultimately we're basically talking about a money line here, right? Nicole, like less than 5% of NFL games actually land on one point. So to me, the line movement that we've seen back and forth here a little bit is largely insignificant. These are numbers under three. For perspective, 14% of NFL games, almost three times as many land on three as they do on one. So, you know, the line movement here isn't really all that significant, to be honest with you. But it's at least interesting that we've reached this point for an unprecedented rating for the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, I think for most of us, we're excited to see the Eagles play a living, breathing offense and see what they can do. And I agree with you, Mo taking a look at the Chiefs against the Bengals, the box score, like the the score at the end of the first half was not indicative of the fact that the Chiefs basically controlled the ball the entire first half. I mean, the first half score, like heading into halftime was kind of shocking. Um, So yeah, this will, this will be exciting, but I do think that there are a lot of injuries on that Chiefs team that are going to a factor in here. Now, we know that they get a two-week break, so it's a little bit more time for them to recover. So let's go ahead and, you know, jump into these injuries because they might be factoring into what this line is. Now, like we said, at the end of the game last weekend, I don't even know who Mahomes had left to throw the ball to. Like, it would just seem like every receiver was going down. You had that injury to Sneed. Obviously, the Eagles are dealing with their own injuries, but the Chiefs just couldn't catch a break last weekend. So, like, what are you looking out for? Like, what did you see? Do you think these guys are going to be healthy in two weeks' time? You haven't heard of Marcus Kemp? <laughs> Is he Sean Kemp's brother? I, I actually at this don't point? think I know. I knew who Marcus <laughs> Kemp was. Um, Mahomes said he threw to him on practice squad days back in his first year, so he must have been hanging around for a minute. <laughs> um, I mean, but everyone was down. Everyone was down. Yeah, it was and Mahomes crazy. was hobbling out there. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. good for them for for stringing the win together because that was. I mean, it that was the. I was worried that they. I mean, they controlled the ball. Don't get me wrong, but like towards the end there, I was like, oh my God, like how are they going yeah, to physically game goes get into to the OT. end zone? It might get a little hairy for the Chiefs offense for sure. Um I thought Mahomes didn't look great when I saw the videos last week of him moving around in practice. So I'm hoping we see some better videos in the next couple weeks. That being said, he played very, very well. So um I think we can only assume he's gonna be in pretty good shape. Um, it did seem like his ankle kind of wore down as the game went on. He was definitely having more plays where he was limping off near the end of the game than early on. Um, and, and yeah, the, the wide receiver situation, now, this is definitely a situation where I, I think if the game was this week, the Chiefs would be in some serious trouble here potentially like, but multiple weeks to recover for what seemed to be fairly minor injuries, but just like the kind of injuries that you might not be able to play through in one week, but maybe you can in two. I don't know. That's just my rough guess of the situation. I would think McCole Hardman, Kadarius Tony, Juju Smith Schuster, they all got banged up, but I would think they're all better than 50 50 to play. Um Legarius Sneed is probably the biggest question mark, I would think. He's uh he was probably the Chiefs' second best player on D this year. Um, and we've seen players miss multiple weeks in concussion protocol before. He, he looked like he got banged up pretty good. So I would guess he's the least likely to play, but hoping he plays for sure because his backup is a like a seventh round rookie. I mean, he played fine against the Bengals, but man, the Eagles have one hell of a pair of receivers. So that, that could be big if Snead is out. I would say, honestly, though, the most impactful 
the most impactful injury to me is honestly probably Jalen Hurts, though. I I don't think he looks good. I don't think he looks like himself. The stats say he's not himself. Um, he has not had more than 39 yards rushing since he came back. Um, he has not had more than 6.5 yards per attempt passing since he came back. And for reference, he had a full season average of eight there. So two total touchdowns. I don't know what's going on here, but I feel like people aren't talking about Jalen Hurts being hurt because the Eagles have not had to had have him under any sort of pressure, like throwing pressure. Like he's throwing in mostly pretty ideal situations, and we saw him miss a pretty clear touchdown to AJ Brown down the seam. We saw some other misses. I don't think he looks good at all right now. I'm curious if your eye test is, is saying the same, Steven, because I just am pretty skeptical of what Jalen Hurts can do passing right now. I saw what you saw. I saw him not only miss a wide open A.J. Brown streak into the end zone against San Francisco, but I saw the same exact thing the week before against the Giants. So um, the only question I have is if they're going to need that against the Chiefs and you know, we'll talk about this more on the Megapod, and then we have, you know, a full Super Bowl prop show that Nicole and I are doing from down in Arizona next week, so everybody stay tuned for that. But I'll give you the cliff notes here. The Eagles, I think I mentioned this last week on this show too, the, the Eagles are so good running the ball in terms of EPA and success rate. The gap between them and number two was the same as the gap between, like, number two and number 14 or number two and number 18. That's how dominant they were running the ball. And the Chiefs were dead last in run-stop win rate in the regular season. Now, Mo, I know that you have some concerns about that stat overall, but even if you look at the other stats, this is a well below average run-stopping defense for Kansas City. So I'm not convinced that Jalen Hurts is going to have to test that throwing shoulder even in the Super Bowl, man. Like, that's what's so crazy about this. You know, I've already bet. I threw it in the Discord uh, on Wednesday here, the week before the Super Bowl. The first bet I made for the Super Bowl was Jalen Hurts under 246 passing yards. This is already a number that he only hit five of 15 times during the regular season. We already mentioned he hasn't hit that number either time in the playoff games. So I think that combined with the fact that the Eagles should be able to do whatever they want running the ball in this game means that he's not going to be tested very much. I think if he if he's going to come close to going over this number – it means that the Eagles are in a world of hurt and Mahomes is slinging it all over the place and we're going to have a high-scoring game. That's kind of how I feel about the way this game state is going to play out, Nicole. Yeah, it's going to... Oh, go ahead, Mo. I, I think this is one of those things that it looks bad on paper, which maybe it doesn't even look as bad as I think in some, some respects. Like you look at EPA and DVOA, those stats do not think the Chiefs were that bad, roughly average. Um my eyes told me they were pretty poor for a lot of the season. I think they honestly improved a lot as the season went on. The defense was just playing a lot better near the end of the year, but I, I think this is just one of those things where this always looks like you can run the ball on the Chiefs on paper every single year in the playoffs, and, and it just never happens. I, I mean, it just doesn't happen, really. The Niners did an okay job in the Super Bowl, and that's really the only game where I can remember that anyone was like pretty good running the ball, and then that still wasn't enough. It's just really hard to beat high-level playoff teams with one-dimensional, especially when the Chiefs, I know that they don't have like an amazing collection of talent, although it's certainly better than it's been in years past, but people need to start giving some credit to Steve Spagnuolo. He is probably one of the best defensive coordinators in the NFL. I think he's done amazing work with the Chiefs over the years, and he should be ready, and, and he should be having a plan that's going to make Jalen Hurts make a play, I would think. Yeah, this is just an interesting Super Bowl for me just because I don't know when the last time we've had two teams in the Super Bowl that have both quarterbacks injured and just have like such big injuries that we have to try to account for. I will say that I just, the thing that worries me with Mahomes is basically, you know, he doesn't really have the ability to scramble. Like every time he was scrambling, I was like, I couldn't even look because I thought, you know, he was going to break that ankle. And then it we, was ugly. It was ugly. Like, it, it, like, you know, he's struggling out there. And, and when we talk about that fumble where, you know, he didn't really get touched and he fumbled the ball, 
If he was able to plant on that ankle, he probably would have been able to fall on the ball. But he's trying to baby the ankle. He's trying to get around and like play. And by the time he he gets on the other ankle to try to plant, you know, the Bengals are on it. So this one's tough for me. I'll probably be betting on some fun props while we're in Arizona. And you'll see me going around to sports books and you'll see me betting on some of these props. But as far as the spread, I don't know if I'm going to be betting on that for the Super Bowl. What I will say, though, and this is just my last, this isn't even really a betting thing, but I happen to be watching the game at a Chiefs bar last weekend for one of my best friends. And the Chiefs fans are just like so positive about their team, which is really something as a Steelers fan, like you never get. Like the Steelers fan, to us true Yinzer Steelers fans, like if you talk crap about the Steelers, like we'll back our Steelers up. But it's like, when it was Roethlisberger, like stupid Roethlisberger, it's time to retire. You're so old, you can't move. Like it shouldn't be Pickett. Like you know, Pickett should have caught that. Like we just crap on our team incessantly, and the Chiefs fans are so nice to their players. They're like, Mahomes, you got to protect yourself out there. Like you're the best quarterback in the league. Like it's okay, buddy. And so it was. It was very refreshing for me to. It it was actually kind of it was refreshing, but very odd to me to be around like hundreds of people that are just so positive, even when, you know, Mahomes fumbles the ball without being touched. Steelers fans would never, never praise their quarterback after that. So good fan base you got going on there, Mo. They better be, Nicole. They found the golden goose, for God's sakes. Like, Mo, be honest. Like, Was it like this when Alex Smith was under center for Kansas City? <laughs> no, definitely not. Football's too easy when you have Mahomes. That's the problem. <laughs> so it's a Mahomes thing. It's not a Chiefs it's thing. Boring. Yeah. That's what I used to say with, with my buddy. It's boring. You just Chiefs go down 10. You just yawn, <laughs> make a snack. You come back. It's probably 14 to 10. I mean, yeah, not football's too, worried too about easy it. when you have the best quarterback in the world. <laughs> Well, makes sense. This, this definitely is not actionable betting information, Nicole, but the last <laughs> two times we've had Super Bowls with spreads of less than two points, we got some good ones. We had the, the Chiefs Niners Super Bowl, which was a huge fourth quarter comeback. And then we had the New England Seattle Super Bowl where Russell Wilson throws a pick on the goal line to end the game and, see, and, New, and New England wins at 28-24. So if the spread is any indication, we might have a classic on our hands here. And we better have a freaking good halftime performance. That's all I'm going to say. There are high expectations on that halftime performance. But all right, guys, this I don't are we coming back next week? I don't know. I think this is this the last show or are we coming back next week? I think this is probably it, right? We have we have the Megapod this week that will, you know, Adam and Matt will give kind of their expectations going in and then we'll have our bets on the Megapod in particular and then. You know, the three of us will reconvene with our entire line staff on the Super Bowl props special that we're doing down with Caesar Sportsbook in Arizona. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have that special show, but I think this is it, guys. So thanks for having me on the last few weeks while Eli's been on leave. Yeah. And just for everyone that's tuned in this season, thank you so much. It's been a blast chatting the NFL with you. And if you're betting on the Super Bowl, good luck on your bets as always. And like Steven said, I will be down in Arizona. Steven will be down in Arizona and we will be doing a special Super Bowl prop show with Caesars at the Super Bowl Media Center. So make sure that you're watching out for that next week on YouTube as well as on social because we'll be clipping that up and putting it on social. So good luck with your bets. Thank you all for joining us and we will see you next season. 